Up and running. Thank you once again for joining me. I've got a fantastic lesson today about how to multiply fractions numerically. There are no paper folds. There are no number lines. It is simple and good old fashioned multiplication. And let's start here with the key points. Number one key point is you got to remember something here. There is no need to find any common denominators when you multiply fractions. That is the most commonly time-wasting method that is used by students all the time. They think that they have to use the same method as adding and subtracting fractions. This one here, guys, it's simple. Convert any mixed fractions into improper fractions like any other equation with addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. We all do them the same way. If you see a mixed fraction, turn it into an improper fraction and then use the steps I'm going to show you right now. We've got here the third thing. Here's how you do this stuff, guys. It's simple. Multiply the numerators together and then multiply the denominators together. That's it. That's as simple as it gets. And then convert any improper fractions in your final answer back to a mixed fraction. And then reduce. So let's see what that looks like when we start practicing with the numbers. So go ahead. Let's write down an example. Let's go ahead and say... We've got, I don't know why this eraser icon is flashing for me, but maybe it'll write for us. We've got, uh, let's say, three quarters. Indeed, it writes. Let me try something. Maybe I can get rid of it that way. Nope, it doesn't want to go away. Maybe click some buttons uh, and doesn't want to go away. Let's just see what happens here. Three quarters multiplied by two fifths. A common, and it's not wrong to do so. It's just a time waster and you're going to get huge numbers and it's just, Ah, it's just a waste of time. Just go ahead and multiply the numerators. Go three times two. That makes six. And then go four times five, and that makes 20. And then just reduce it. So we know that two goes into both. We can divide by twos. And then your answer is gonna be three tenths. And we cannot reduce that any further, so we're, we've completed the question, it's done. So you see, I didn't do any common denominator. It's a waste of time to find common denominators. Let's do another example. Um, let's use a mixed fraction now. Let's say we've got three wholes and one fourth. And we're going to multiply it by one and a third. One whole and a third. And we need an answer. So Mr. Malham says don't do anything till you turn these mixed fractions into an improper fraction. So we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. And if you forgot how to do so, you just multiply these, get your answer and add it to the numerator. And so we got 4 times 3 is 12 plus 1 is 13 over the denominators 4. And then we have here 3 times 1 multiply gets 3 plus 1 more makes 4 thirds. And now we we don't get common denominators. It's a waste of time. And you, you're just going to end up reducing so much. Just multiply the numerators. You get 13 times 4. And if you don't know how to do that, you just do it on the side. I mean, you're going uh, to get 52. Just do it like this. You get 52 on the numerator. And then on the denominator, you get 12. And the first number that sticks in my mind, I mean, I could divide these by 4. But maybe you, you didn't know that, maybe. Maybe you're just going to be like, okay, I'll divide by 2 first because they're both even numbers. And then this reduces down to 26. Let me erase this stuff. Get 26 over 6. And then you realize right away you've got even numbers again. So you can just divide by 2 once more. And that breaks down to 13 over uh, 3. So we get 13 thirds, but we can't leave it as 13 thirds. We have to convert it back into a mixed fraction. So ask yourself, Ladies and gentlemen, how many times does 3 go into 13? Well, we got 3, 6, 9, 12. That's 4 times. And we got, well, we get to 12 and 13. There's 1 left over. And that is going to be our answer. 4 and a third. You guys want to do one more? Let's do one more. Just make sure you understand this. Go ahead and write this down. Let's do, uh, let's do 1 and... 1 6 multiplied by 2 and 1 fourth. You know what? Let's change that to 3 fourths. 2 and 3 fourths. Go ahead and pause the video and see how well you do. I'm going to assume you've unpaused and now it's time to check your answer. So going ahead and converting this into an improper, you should get 7 over 6. 
multiplied by, let's see, 4 times 2 is 8, plus 3 is 11, 11 over 4. And now we'll multiply these numerators, get 77 on top of 6 times 4 is 24. And now we can go ahead and find a mixed fraction. So 24 goes into 77. Now, you might have to stack some numbers. Let's see, 24 and 24 is 48. How about 24 times 3? What does that make? That makes 12. Carry the 1. You're going to get 72. That's pretty close. So we know it goes into 77 at least three whole times. And that gets us to 72. That means there's five remainder out of 24. Now it's time to think about reducing this. Can we reduce 5 over 24? We, we can't, no. Now, now don't get caught up here. You never, never reduce. This is worth noting here. Never reduce the whole number. Write this down in your notes. Never reduce the whole number. Only reduce the fraction. But it is already reduced, so we got our right answer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you can comfortably and confidently say you have mastered multiplication of fractions numerically.